Now let's discuss accounting for intercompany transactions. So the entities that belong to a group, which includes the parent and its subsidiaries, may transact with parties that belong to the group or outside the group. If the transaction is between entities that belongs to a group, for example, parent and subsidiary or a subsidiary with a fellow subsidiary, those transactions are called intercompany transactions. And these intercompany transactions must be properly accounted for in the preparation of the consolidated financial statements. So here, this presents what intercompany transaction looks like. So within the group of companies, there are several entities. And it includes the parent and all its subsidiaries. So if the transactions involves entities that belong to the group, this is called the intercompany transaction. And for this discussion, we will only focus on the sales transaction within the group. Of course, there are many transactions that an entity can engage with. However, our focus is only the sales transaction. But for this video, our discussion will be intercompany sale of inventory. So we have two types, which is the downstream sale and upstream sale. When we say downstream sale, the seller is the parent and the buyer is the subsidiary. That is why it is called downstream because the sales transaction is from the parent to the subsidiary. So the intercompany seller is the parent and the intercompany buyer is the subsidiary. While for an upstream sale, the intercompany seller is the subsidiary, while the intercompany buyer is the parent. Aside from upstream and downstream sale, there could also be a sale between subsidiaries of a parent. And this is accounted for similarly to an upstream sale. So in the preparation of the consolidated financial statements, since we are preparing the consolidated financial statements on the premise that these entities are considered a single economic entity, which is the group. And in the consolidated financial statements, any transactions that occurred between these or among these entities should not appear. What appears in the consolidated financial statements are transactions of the group which is the single economic entity with outside parties. So for a sales transaction, the sales transaction that must appear in the consolidated financial statement is the sales transaction of the group with an outside customer. And for the purchases and other costs and expenses of the group, what appears in the consolidated financial statements are the costs and expenses from outside supplier. That is why transactions that occur within the group should not appear in the consolidated financial statements. So in order for us to present in the consolidated financial statements costs and expenses from outside suppliers and sales transactions with outside customers, we need to eliminate the intercompany gains or profits and losses that resulted from an intercompany transaction. Again, why do we need to eliminate the intercompany gains and losses? Because for profits and losses, what is presented in the consolidated financial statements are profits and losses with outside entities. And the costs and expenses that must appear in the consolidated financial statement likewise must be with outside entities. When we say outside entities, these are entities that do not belong to the group. So why are only transactions with outside parties are presented in the consolidated financial statements? Because the costs and expenses from outside suppliers are those that are paid or incurred by the group as a whole. And the sales to outside customers are the sales realized by the whole group. That is why any sales 
transactions made within the group are not yet realized because what is realized are those that is outside of the group. So by the time of sale, all intercompany gains and losses are eliminated because they are still unrealized. And when do we realize these intercompany gains and losses? So there are several ways to realize these intercompany gains and losses. And it depends on the type of asset that is sold. So there is a non-depreciable asset and a depreciable asset. So for non-depreciable asset, we only have one way to realize the intercompany gains and losses. And that is when it is sold to outside parties. And since this is already a sale to an outside party, we can now realize the gains and losses that is incurred or earned within an intercompany transaction. But for a depreciable asset, there are two ways to recognize the realization of the intercompany gains and losses. So since our discussion for this particular video is only inventory, and inventory is a non-depreciable asset, so we will discuss the realization of intercompany gains and losses for a non-depreciable asset, and that is through sale to outside parties. So let's illustrate what happens in an intercompany sale of inventory. So in an intercompany sale, so there is a seller and there is a buyer, but these two entities belong to one group. So the seller records its sales price in its separate financial statement. And the sales recorded by the seller is the cost of sales in the separate financial statement of the buyer. Because this is the amount paid by the buyer to acquire the goods from the seller. And subsequently, this inventory that is acquired by the buyer from the seller will be sold to an outside customer. So in each separate financial statement of this entity, this gross profit is realized in the separate income statement of the seller. And this gross profit is realized in the separate financial statement of the buyer. But for the group, which is the consolidated financial statement of all entities, the realized gross profit is the gross profit that is sold to outside customers. And how is this computed? That is the difference between the sales, sales to an outside customer, and the cost of sales from the outside supplier. So the difference of this sales and the cost of sales, which is acquired from an outside supplier, will be the gross profit that will appear in the consolidated financial statement. Which means that this sales, which is charged by the intercompany seller to the intercompany buyer, will be eliminated. Which means that this amounts will not appear in the consolidated financial statement. So let's proceed to an illustrative problem. Now let's start answering a problem about intercompany sale of inventory. Lucky You Company owns 60% of Kiki Chow Company's outstanding ordinary shares. Lucky You sells chicken flavored instant noodles, while Kiki Chow sells pork flavored instant noodles. In the separate records of both entities, Lucky You sales to external parties generates a gross profit of 40% while Kiki Chow has a 50% gross profit from external sales. In 2020, which is the current year, both entities started to sell goods within the group and it is agreed that intersegment sales shall have a markup on cost of 25%. So we have two companies, Lucky You and Kiki Chow, so Lucky You is the acquirer and Kiki Chow is the acquiree. And in 2020, both entities are engaged in the sale of goods within the group of companies and outside the group. So the following information pertains to the income statement of both entities for the years 2020 and 2021. So this is for the year 2020 and this is for the year 2021. So based on the information, the total sales 
for 2020, for Lucky U is 9,000 and Kiki Chow is 5,000. So this is the total sales, which means this includes both internal and external sales. While there is a separate information about the intersegment sales or the sales within the group of companies. So Lucky U is 1,000, which means that the 1,000 peso sale of Lucky You is the sale of goods by Lucky You to Quicky Chow. And Quicky Chow has an intersegment sale of 750, which means this is the intersegment purchased by Lucky You from Quicky Chow. And the 1,000 is part of the 9,000 total sales of Lucky You, while the 750 is also included in the 5,000 total sales of Quicky Chow. So the cost of sales related to the sales of each entity is different for external sale and internal sale because the gross profit or the markup on cost is different for both types of sales transactions. So in the next paragraph, Lucky U's external sale of Quiki Chow's noodles in 2020 and 2021 have cost in its separate records for 400 and 700 pesos, respectively. Moreover, Quiki Chow's separate financial statements show that cost of sales related to external sale of Lucky U noodles in 2020 and 2021 were cost of 800 and 1,200, respectively. This paragraph gives us an information about the sale of each entity of the goods they purchased from the other entities. So this is the sale to outside customers. Then the last paragraph, the beginning balances of a consolidated retained earnings and non-controlling interest in 2020 are 6,250 and 2,500 respectively. So let's start by preparing the journal entries first in the separate books of each company. Of course, the journal entry that we will only prepare is the intercompany sale of inventory so that we can compare the difference between the upstream and downstream sale and how it is accounted for in the preparation of the consolidated financial statements. So here we have two books. For Lucky You, The Acquirer, and Kiki Chow. Let's start with the downstream sale. Again, when we say downstream sale, the intercompany seller is the acquirer and the intercompany buyer is the acquiree. So, which means the parent sells its goods to the subsidiary. So, here the 1000 peso sale of Lucky You is the downstream sale because this is the sale of Lucky You to. Quiki Chow. And while the upstream sale is the 750, where the acquiree is the intercompany seller. So in this case, the seller is Quiki Chow for the 750 pesos. And the intercompany buyer is Lucky You for the 750. So let's start with downstream sale. Our entry in the in the books of Lucky You is to debit cash for 1,000 pesos and credit sales also for 1,000 pesos, assuming the sale is a cash sale. And of course, in the books of Quiki Chow as the buyer, it will be recorded as a purchases. But I will use instead the perpetual inventory system where purchases are recorded directly in inventory. So we debit inventory for 1,000 pesos and credit cash for 1,000 pesos as well. And... Since we are using the perpetual inventory system, after the sales transaction recorded by Lucky U, there should be also a corresponding entry with regards to the cost of sale of 1,000 pesos. So that is debit cost of sales for 800 pesos. Now, how do we compute for the 800 pesos? So this is computed as the 1,000 pesos divided by 1.25 pesos because the 1,000 pesos includes a 25% markup on cost based on the last sentence in the first paragraph, which is applicable to both entities. As long as there is an inter segment sale, it will have a markup on cost of 25%. So next is the credit is to inventory also at 800 pesos. 
So now the owner of the goods after the intercompany sale is Quickie Chow. This inventory it will be included in the inventory of Quickie Chow and it will be carried in the books of Quickie Chow at 1000 pesos which includes the intercompany markup of 25%. So again, this intercompany sale shall not reflect in the consolidated financial statements. And the markup, which is 25%, is considered to be unrealized based on the point of view of the group because the sale occurred within the group. The 25% markup shall only be considered as realized when the inventory, which is held by Quickie Chow, is subsequently sold to an outside customer. So based on the second paragraph, let's check how much of the inventory of 1,000 were sold to outside customers. So here in the second sentence, in the second paragraph, Quickie Chow's separate financial statements show that cost of sales related to external sale of lucky you noodles in 2020 and 2021 were 800 pesos and 1200 so which means in 2020 from quickie chow's purchases from lucky you of 1000 pesos out of this 1000 pesos 800 were sold during the year of course the sale of quickie chow to external customers will have a gross profit of 50% because that is the policy of Quiki Chow that for every sale to outside customers, the gross profit must be 50%. And the 50% gross profit is the gross profit in the separate books of Quiki Chow. Again, in the perspective of Quiki Chow, in its separate financial statements, the inventory it purchased from Lucky You is carried at the cost of 1,000 pesos. So how do we record the sale of Quiki Chow of the 800 cost of the inventory purchased from Lucky You? So that is a resale to external parties. So we debit cost of sales for 800 pesos and credit inventory for 800 pesos. Pesos. So this is the entry for the cost of sale of 800 pesos. Of course, since these were sold, there should be an entry for the sales transaction. And again, the gross profit must be 50%. So how much is the sales? So of course, the entry would be credit to sales 1,600, which is computed by 800 divided by 0.5 because the cost ratio is also at 50%. And of course, the debit is to cash also for 1,600 pesos. Now for the upstream sale, so our entry is in the books of Quickie Chow. So the entry is debit cash for 750 pesos, which is the upstream sale and credit sales for 750 pesos. And this is also the intercompany purchase of Lucky You. So the entry for the purchase transaction in Lucky You's book is debit to inventory following the perpetual inventory system for 750 pesos and credit cash also at 750 pesos. Again, since we are applying the perpetual inventory system, in Quickie Chow's, there is an additional entry in the books of Quickie Chow related to the cost of sale. So our entry would be debit cost of sale for 600 pesos. So how do we compute for the 600 pesos? So this is the 750 pesos divided by 1.25 because the markup on intersegment sale is 25%. Then credit inventory for 600 pesos. Then the goods sold by Quickie Chow to Lucky You is now an inventory in the separate financial statement of Lucky You and it will be carried at 750 which is the cost per separate financial statement of Lucky You. However, for consolidation purposes, again, since this is an intercompany transaction, we need to eliminate this. However, 
and the intercompany markup, which is the 25%, should not reflect in the consolidated financial statement until the inventory is subsequently sold to an external party. So according to the second paragraph, Lucky use external sale of Quickie Chow noodles in 2020 is 400 pesos, which means that in 2020, out of 750 peso purchase by Lucky You from Quickie Chow, the 400 peso cost of inventory was sold during the year by Lucky You to external parties. So our entry would be debit cost of sales 400 and credit inventory 400 related to the sale of the inventory purchase from Quickie Chow. However, this is the entry for the cost of sales. The entry on the sales transaction, since the gross profit of Lucky You for every sale to external party is at 40%, so the 400 peso in the point of view of Lucky You is at 60%. That is why the selling price is a debit to cash for 667 pesos. And 667 is computed as 400 divided by 0.6, which is the cost ratio then credit sales for 667 pesos so these are the journal entries recorded in the separate books of lucky you and quickie chow in 2020 which are all related to the intercompany transaction that occurred in 2020 again in the consolidated financial statement these transactions should not appear. However, in their separate financial statements, this will appear because Lucky You and Quickie Chow are two separate like, legal entities. And Quickie Chow is considered as an external party of Lucky You as far as the separate financial statement of Lucky You is concerned. And... Lucky You is an external party to Quickie Chow as long as the separate financial statement of Quickie Chow is concerned. However, for consolidation purposes, again, this will not appear. What appears in the consolidated financial statement are transactions with outside parties. Now, let's prepare the eliminating entries required in 2020 in the preparation of the consolidated financial statements. So let's start with acquisition date eliminating entry. Since there is no information about the acquisition date, we cannot prepare the eliminating entries on acquisition date. So which means we cannot also prepare any eliminating entry related to prior year transactions. So what we can prepare is the eliminating entries for the year 2020. Based on the available information, we cannot prepare any eliminating entries related to the acquisition date. And any entry subsequent to acquisition date that is prior to 2020. So what we can prepare is the current year eliminating entry, which is for 2020. So for, so for the current year eliminating entries, we have intercompany transactions, amortization of excess, However, for our problem, based on the available information, there is no information regarding the differences between the fair value and book value of the acquiry's net assets existing at acquisition date. So we cannot prepare any of this except for goodwill. I think there is an impairment of goodwill in the information given. And of course, the last is the share of the NCI and the subsidiaries net income so first is the elimination of intercompany transactions and we have an intercompany sale of inventory so that will be part of the eliminating entries and aside from that there is a dividend paid by the acquiree so which means that lucky you recorded a dividend income in its separate records since Quickie Chow in 2020 declared a dividend of 20 pesos, which means that Lucky You receives a 60% dividend from Quickie Chow. 
So it is recorded as dividend income in the books of Lucky You and it should be eliminated. So our entry will be credit dividends paid for 20 pesos. So this is the dividends paid by Quicky Chow. Then debit dividend income for 12 pesos. So the 12 pesos is the 60% of 20 pesos dividends paid. And the difference is debited to non-controlling interest for 8 pesos. Again, since non-controlling interest is the 40% equivalent of the acquiree's shareholder's equity, any decrease in the subsidiary's shareholder's equity, which includes dividend, must also have a corresponding decrease in the non-controlling interest, but only up to 40%. So this is our first intercompany transaction eliminated. Then the other intercompany transaction is the sale of inventory. Let's start with downstream sale. So for downstream sale, our debit is sales for 1,000 pesos. So this is the intersegment sale of Lucky You. Then credit cost of sales for 1,000 pesos since we are using the perpetual inventory system. However, if the inventory system being used in the consolidated financial statement is consistently periodic inventory system, we will use instead of cost of sales, the account title purchases. But either approach, the end result should always be the same. But for this, problem i will use the perpetual inventory system so we credit cost of sales 1000 pesos and moreover cost of sales is credited because purchases is part of the computation of cost of sale if you can remember that purchases is part of the computation of the cost of goods available for sale and Cost of sale is the portion of the cost of goods available for sale which is sold to outside customers. And since we are eliminating the purchases, which is an intercompany purchase, instead of decreasing the purchases account, we cannot since we are not using the periodic inventory system. So instead of decreasing the purchases account, what we will reduce is the cost of sales account. Because if we reduce the purchases, there is a corresponding reduction in the cost of sales account. That is why we credited sales in order to eliminate the intercompany purchase. And our next entry will be the elimination of the unrealized intercompany gross profit. So what is an unrealized intercompany gross profit? So basically, this is the 25% markup on cost for every intersegment sale. Again, as I have mentioned earlier, that the 25% markup on cost at the time of sale is unrealized because it is only a transfer from one entity to another within the group. What is considered as a realized profit is the profit that is earned or realized from outside customers. So which means that the 25% gross profit will only be realized if the intercompany buyer sells the goods to outside customers. And for the downstream sale, the intercompany buyer is the acquiree, which is Quickie Chow. And in 2020, out of 1,000, Quickie Chow sold 800 pesos, which means out of 1,000 pesos, there is a markup of 25% that is already realized in 2020. And that is related to the 800 pesos because the 800 pesos is actually sold by Quickie Chow to outside customers. However, the difference of 200 pesos, which is the unsold portion of the 1,000 intercompany purchased by Quickie Chow from Lucky You, the 25% on the 200 peso unsold inventory is not yet realized. So how do we reflect the unrealized portion of the 25% markup? 
So first, let's compute for the ending inventory of the intercompany purchase. So at intercompany selling price, the available goods of Quiggy Chow that is purchased from Lucky You is 1,000. And out of 1,000, 800 is sold by the intercompany buyer to outside parties. So the buyer is Quiggy Chow for a downstream sale. And the remaining unsold portion is 200. And the 200 has an intersegment gross profit of 25%. And the 25% of the 200 pesos must be eliminated. So the eliminating entry would be a credit to inventory for 40 pesos. So 40 pesos is the intersegment markup that is computed as 200 pesos divided by 1.25 times 0.25 then our debit is cost of sales or 40 pesos so why is this the entry in order to eliminate the effect of the unrealized gross profit of 40 pesos for a downstream sale so first is the inventory why do we credit the inventory so in the consolidated financial statement specifically statement of financial position in the current asset portion, the inventory that will appear is the summation of the inventory of the acquirer and acquiree in their separate financial statements. However, for consolidation purposes, adjustments must be made in order for the inventory presented in this statement is the cost per intercompany seller. So in our problem, the inventory is carried in the books of Quikicha, which is the intercompany buyer. And the cost carried in the books of the intercompany buyer is based on the selling price that is charged by Lucky You to Quikicha. However, for the consolidated financial statement, the ending inventory that will appear in the consolidated financial statements is the cost in the point of view of the intercompany seller, which is Lucky You. So which means that in the separate financial statement of Quiki Chow, the ending inventory that is purchased from the acquirer has a cost of 200 in the separate books of the acquiree, Quiki Chow. So it is correct that the 200 will appear in the inventory section or the current asset section of the statement of financial position of Quiki Chow in its separate financial statement. However, for consolidation purposes, the ending inventory is that will appear is not 200 because the 200 includes a 25% intersegment gross profit. The inventory that must appear in the consolidated financial statement is 160 pesos. And the 160 pesos is the cost in the point of view of the intercompany seller. So always remember that the inventory that must appear in the statement of financial position for consolidation purposes is the cost in the perspective of the intercompany seller because the cost in the point of view of the intercompany seller is the cost of that inventory purchased from outside supplier because the 200 pesos is the cost of the inventory from an internal supplier again as i have said in the consolidated financial statements all figures should only related to transactions with outside parties so which means for the sales transaction the sales in the consolidated income statement must include sales to outside parties likewise for cost the cost that will appear in the consolidated financial statement must be the cost from outside supplier in order to present in that way we credit inventory for 40 pesos so that the inventory will be presented at cost from outside supplier. Then we debit cost of sales of 40 pesos. So we debit cost of sales for 40 pesos 
because in the books of lucky you, the 40 pesos is considered as realized. Because again, lucky you and quickie chow are two separate legal entities. So in their separate books, the sales between these entities are considered realized per separate financial statements. However, we are preparing the consolidated financial statements. And what we consider realized are those profit that is realized from outside customers. So we debit cost of sales at 40 pesos in order to defer the realization of the 40 pesos markup. So by debiting cost of sales at 40 pesos, we reduce the gross profit recorded by Lucky U in its books by 40 pesos so that the gross profit that will appear in the consolidated financial statement related to Lucky U's intercompany sale will only be the 25% markup realized from the sale to outside customers by Quickie Chow. Now let's proceed to upstream sale. So for the upstream sale, the sale is 750 pesos. So the entry will be the same as downstream sales. So debit sales for 750 and credit cost of sales for 750 pesos. Again, we need to compute for the unrealized gross profit or unrealized markup related to the ending inventory, which is the inventory of Lucky You and not yet sold to outside customers. So let's compute the ending inventory. So at intercompany selling price, the available goods of Lucky You that are purchased from Quickie Chow is 750. And out of 750, based on the problem, we have a 400 peso cost of goods sold by Lucky You. So that is 400. So this is the cost of the inventory in the point of view of Lucky You that is sold to outside parties. Therefore, the remaining inventory that is unsold is 350 pesos. And the 350 pesos includes a 25% intersegment markup. So again, in the inventory section of the consolidated statement of financial position, the inventory will not appear at 350 pesos. The 350 pesos ending inventory will only appear in the separate financial statement of Lucky You. But for consolidation purposes, again, what appears in the inventory section should only be the cost of the inventory from outside supplier. And the cost of the inventory from outside supplier is based on the point of view of the intercompany seller, which is Quickie Chow. So how much is the cost of this inventory in the point of view of Quickie Chow? So that is 350 less the 25% markup. So how do we remove the 25% markup on the 350 peso ending inventory of Lucky You? So that is by debiting cost of sales at 70 pesos and crediting inventory at 70 pesos. So 70 pesos is the 25% markup, which is computed as 350 divided by 1.25 times 0.25. So again, we credit inventory in order to compute for the cost of the inventory from outside supplier, which is in the point of view of the intercompany seller, which is Quickie Chow. And we debit cost of sales of 70 pesos because we need to reduce the gross profit recorded by Quickie Chow from its intercompany sale. Again, the whole 25% on the 750 pesos is considered realized in the books of Quickie Chow. However, for consolidation purposes, the intercompany markup on the 750 should not appear in full in the consolidated financial statements. And we need to decrease that profit for consolidation purposes. And how much profit should we deduct? That is 70, which is the unrealized portion of the intercompany markup.
Now, after the elimination of intercompany transactions, let's proceed to amortization of excess. Again, we have no information about the fair value differences of the acquiree's net assets. So we will proceed to the goodwill impairment. So in 2020, there is a goodwill impairment of 10 pesos. So this goodwill impairment is the impairment of goodwill from the acquisition of Quickie Chow by Lucky You. So our entry would be debit expenses, 10 pesos, or impairment loss, and credit goodwill for 10 pesos then our last entry is the share of nci in subsidiaries net income for consolidation purposes so first before we proceed to this entry we need to compute the net income of the subsidiary that is adjusted for consolidation purposes so after that we can now proceed to this eliminating entry Again, to adjust the net income of the subsidiary for consolidation purposes means that these eliminating entries should be taken into account in order to reflect these on the net income of the subsidiary and the parent company. So first, let's compute for the net income of both entities in their separate books. So let's start with the sales. So the sales includes internal and external sales less cost of sales, so that would be gross profit. Then let's add the dividend income of the parent, so that will be the total revenue, then deduct all expenses, so that is the net income. Also, we will get the share of the NCI in subsidiary's net income, then the share of controlling interest in the consolidated net income. So let's do this for both Lucky and Quickie. So let's compute for the sales. Lucky has a sale of 9,000 and Quickie has a sale of 5,000. So the cost of sales of both entities are 5,600 and 2,725. And how is this computed? So to illustrate, this is the computation of cost of sale for Lucky. So the external is 4,800. That is 8,000 divided. 8,000 times 0 0.60 and for internal is 1,000 divided by 1.25 and the total of this sale is 9,000 pesos which is the total sales of Lucky You. And for Quickie, the total sales is 5,000 pesos. So we separated the internal from external. The internal has a markup of 0.25 so 750 divided by 1.25 the cost is 600 but for the external sale the gross profit is 50%. That is why 4,250 times 0.5. So the total is 2,125. And the total cost of sale for Quickie is 2,725 pesos. So now let's proceed. Let's compute for the gross profit. So the gross profit is 3,400 for Lucky and 2,275 for Quickie. So the dividend income of Lucky is 12 pesos, which is 60% of 20 pesos. So then the total revenue is 3412 and 2275 for Lucky and Quickie. Then deduct the expenses. Then the net income is 2312 for Lucky and 1675 for Quickie. So this amounts 2312 and 1675 are the amounts that we are going to use for consolidation purposes but subject to adjustments. So let's start with the net income per books. So for Lucky, the net income is 2312 and for Quickie, the net income is 1675. So the total is 3987. So this is not yet the net income for consolidation purposes. We need to adjust these amounts so what are the adjustments the adjustments are based on the eliminating entries that we made for the current year and that starts with the intercompany transactions starting with dividend income so the dividend income is debited if you can remember so it is a reduction in the net income of lucky you that is deducted for 12 pesos then the other 
eliminating entries for intercompany transaction is the elimination of the unrealized intercompany markup of 25%. So the total is 12 pesos. So for the unrealized profit on intercompany sale of inventory for downstream sale, our unrealized is 40 pesos. So since this is unrealized, that will be deducted. And for quickie, for upstream sale, the unrealized is 70 pesos. So the total unrealized is 110. Again, we deduct the 40 from 2312 because the 40 in the separate books of Lucky were all realized. Because the 40, this is the sale of Lucky to Quiki. And as far as Lucky is concerned, Quiki is an external party to Lucky. That is why the 40 pesos is realized. Again, for consolidation purposes, since the sale is within the group, this is unrealized. That is why the 40 that is included in the 2312 must be eliminated. That is why 40 pesos is deducted. So same explanation applies to the 70 pesos. So the 70 pesos is considered as realized in the 1,675 pesos because as far as Quickie is concerned, all transactions made to Lucky are all realized. That is why the 70 is part of the 1,675. But again, since we are consolidating, the 70 pesos is considered unrealized because this is an intercompany sale. So that is why this is deducted. So the total unrealized profit is 110. The next adjustment is the amortization of excess. And the amortization of excess that we have is only the impairment of goodwill. So that is 10 pesos. And, the, and always remember that the impairment of goodwill is a deduction from the net income of the subsidiary. So that is 10 pesos. Then let's get the net income for consolidation purposes. Lucky has 2,260 and Quickie is 1,595. So which means that the, for consolidation purposes, the consolidated net income is 3,855. Again, the consolidated net income is 3,855. So the share of the non-controlling interest is 40%. So let's compute the 40% of 1,595. So the 40% is only based on the 1,595 because the NCI has a share only on the net income of Quickie. The net income of Lucky of 2,260 are all net income of the controlling interest and the NCI has no share in the 2,260 pesos. So that is why the share of the controlling interest is 3,217. So how do we get the 3,217? This is the 2,260, the net income of Lucky as adjusted, and the net income of Quiki after we deduct the share of the NCI. So that is 3,217. So now, since we already computed for the share of the NCI in the consolidated net income, which is 638, we can now prepare the last eliminating entry. So our entry will be debit to share of NCI in subsidiaries net income for 638 and the credit to non-controlling interest for 638. So that completes our eliminating entries for 2020. So now we can prepare the consolidated income statement. So again, this is the amounts that we computed a while ago. These are the net income of Lucky and Quickie in their separate books. So since these are the net income of both entities in their separate records, we now adjust these based on the eliminating entries that we did. So let's start with the debits and credits. So for sales, there is a 1,750 total debit, which is downstream and upstream sale. And next is cost of sale. Let's start with the debit. So the debit is 110, so that is 40 and 70. Then for the credit, our credit is 1,750, that is 1,000. 
plus 750. And for the dividend, 12 pesos. And for the expenses, 10 pesos. So now let's compute for the consolidated balances. So for the sales, the consolidated sales is 12,250. Then the cost of sales is 6,685. So the gross profit is 5,565. Then we have no dividend income in the consolidated balance. Then the total revenue is also the gross profit. Then expenses is 1,710. Then the consolidated net income is 3,855. So same as the amount that we have computed a while ago. So this is 3,855. Then deduct the share of the NCI, which is 638. So the, the remainder is 3,217 pesos, which is also the net income of the controlling interest. So the, for the inventory in the consolidated financial statements, the amount that will appear is 440 pesos. That is the ending inventory of Lucky, which is 350, and ending inventory of Quickie, which is 200. So these are the ending inventories in the separate financial statement of both Lucky and Quickie. However, this 550 peso total will not appear as the inv ending inventory in the consolidated financial statements because these amounts include intercompany markup of 25% and these should be eliminated and the total intercompany markup on ending inventory is 110 pesos that is computed as 40 pesos plus 70. That is why after we deduct the 110 from the 350 and 200 the remainder is 440 pesos and these 440 pesos are the cost of the inventory from outside suppliers. Now let's compute for the consolidated retained earnings and non-controlling interest as of December 31, 2020. So first let's start with the beginning balance. So the beginning balance of these accounts in 2020 is 6,250 and 2,000 500 so that is January 1 2020 balance so again for consolidated retain earnings our beginning balance is 6250 for non controlling interest our beginning balance is 2500 so of course the amount being close to the consolidated retain earnings and non controlling interest includes the consolidated net income so the consolidated net income is 3,855 and out of 3,855 the amount that will be close to the consolidated written earnings is 3,217 and that is the share of the controlling interest while in the NCI account the amount will be close is 638 pesos so the total of these two is 3,855 then deduct the dividends paid again always remember that the dividends paid deducted from the consolidated retain earnings are the dividends paid by the controlling interest which is the parent and the amount of dividends paid by the parent is 80 pesos but for nci since this is the 40 percent equivalent of the shareholders equity of the subsidiary and the shareholders of the subsidiary is reduced by the dividends of 20 pesos of course, the NCI account should also decrease by the corresponding amount of dividends, which is 40% of 20 pesos, which is 8 pesos. So now let's get the December 31 balance. For the consolidated retained earnings, the ending balance is 9,387 pesos. And for the NCI, we have 3,130 pesos. Now let's check whether the consolidated cost of sales is actually correct based on our concept that the consolidated cost of sales must be presented at the cost acquired from outside supplier. So let's start with Lucky You. So for Lucky You, we have two types of sales, the external sale and the intersegment sale. So the intersegment sale of Lucky You is 1,000 pesos. And which means that the external sale is 8,000 pesos. However, the external sale is divided again into two. First is the 
goods acquired from outside supplier, and the other external sale are those goods that were acquired from internal parties. So we have from internal supplier, our sale is 667 pesos. So this is the goods that were purchased by Lucky U from Quiki Chow and subsequently sold to external parties. And we have another external sale of 7,333 pesos, which is the goods that were acquired from outside supplier then subsequently sold to external customers. So the total of this sales is 9,000 pesos. So this is for Lucky You. So again, for the 9,000 pesos, the composition is the intersegment sale of 1,000, then the 667, and the remainder is the sales to external parties that includes goods that were acquired from outside suppliers. Now let's proceed to Quickie Chow. Let's start with external sale. So the external sale from the external supplier, then from the internal supplier, and the intersegment sale. So this is the composition of the total sale of Quiki Chow, which is 5,000 pesos. This includes the 750 intersegment sale, or which is the upstream sale, and the 1,600 sale of Quiki Chow to outside customers, which involves goods that were acquired from Lucky You. And this is the sale that we recorded in the books of Quickie Chow. Then the remainder is 2,650, which pertains to goods sold to outside customers that were acquired from outside supplier. So the total is 5,000 pesos. Now let's compute for the cost of goods sold of each type of sales transaction. So for the 7,333 external sale of Lucky You, the related cost of goods sold is 4,400, which is computed as 7,333 multiplied by 60%, which is the cost ratio for Lucky Use external sale. For, and for the 667, the cost of goods sold by Lucky is also at 60% cost ratio, so that is 400 pesos. However, for the intersegment sale, the cost is 800 because for intersegment sale, the markup is 25% on cost. That is why the cost of goods sold in the books of Lucky You is 5,600. Now, let's proceed to Quickie Chow's cost of goods sold per books. So for the external supplier, the, one, the cost of goods sold per books is 1,325. So for Quickie Chow, the cost ratio is 50%. So that is 2,650 times 50%, which is 1,325. Same as for 1,600, which is also at 50% cost ratio. Then for the intersegment sale, the markup is 25%. That is why we our computation is 750 divided by 1.25. And the total cost of goods sold in the books of Quiki Chow is 2,725. So based on the income statement that we did, so this is the cost of goods sold recorded in the separate books of Lucky and Quiki. Take note that for all external sale of Lucky U, the gross profit is always at 40%. That is why both of these sales has a cost ratio of 60%. And for Quickie Chow, the gross profit is 50%. That is why both of these types of sale has a cost ratio of 50%. Now, how much of this cost of goods sold is presented in the consolidated financial statement? So let's start with Lucky You. Again, all costs that must be presented in the consolidated financial statements are the costs that were acquired from outside supplier. So let's start with the 4,400. So for the 4,400, this is also presented in the consolidated financial statement at 4,400 because the 4,400 is the cost of this inventory that were acquired from outside suppliers. However, for the 400 peso cost of goods sold of Lucky You, which is the cost acquired from an internal supplier, which is Quickie Chow, this is not the cost acquired from the outside supplier. So for this particular inventory, we need to determine how much was this when it was purchased by Quickie Chow from outside supplier. 
And since the 400 includes a 25% markup, and since the 25% markup is an intercompany markup, we need to exclude the 25%. So that is computed by 400 pesos divided by 1.25 so that we can remove the 25% intercompany markup. So that is 320 pesos. So what is the 320 pesos? So this amount is the cost of this inventory when it was acquired by Quickie Chow from outside supplier. Next for the 800 pesos. Since this is an inter-segment sale, this should not appear in the consolidated cost of goods sold. And this is part of our eliminating entries, the inter-segment sale. So that is why it should be eliminated in the consolidated financial statement. So let's proceed to Quickie Chow. For Quickie Chow, for the 1,325 peso cost of goods sold recorded in its books, so it is still at 1,325 when it is presented in the consolidated financial statement. However, for the 800 pesos, since this is acquired by Quickie Chow from Lucky You, it means that the 800 has a 25% markup charged by Lucky You to Quickie Chow. So how much of this inventory would be presented as cost of goods sold in the consolidated financial statements? So that is the cost when Lucky You acquired this inventory from outside supplier. And that is 800 divided by 1.25. So which means it is 640 pesos. So the 640 pesos is the cost of this inventory when Lucky You acquired this from outside supplier. Then for the intersegment sale of Quickie Chow, since this is also eliminated in our eliminating entries, this will not be part of the consolidated cost of goods sold. Then let's get the total of these four figures. So the total is 6,685. So this is our consolidated cost of goods sold that will appear in the consolidated financial statements, which is also correct based on our working paper for the income statement section of the consolidated financial statement. Now, after we're done with the 2020 transactions, let's now proceed to 2021 transactions. So for 2021, we have additional intercompany transactions that occurred between Lucky U and Quickie Chow. So which means that when we compute the consolidated balances for 2021, we will not account only the 2021 intercompany transactions, but also those intercompany transactions that remain unsold to outside customers from 2020. So before we proceed to the preparation of the consolidated balances, let us now prepare the journal entries in each books of Lucky You and Quickie Chow for the current year's intersegment sale and purchases. So let's start with the downstream sale. So for the downstream sale, it is 1,500 pesos. So the entry is debit cash, 1,500 and credit sales for 1,500. So the entry to record the cost of sale using perpetual inventory system is debit cost of sales for 1,200. So again, 1,200 is computed as 1,500 divided by 1.25 because the intersegment markup is 25%. Then credit inventory for 1,200. Then in the Quickie Chow's books, the entry to record is debit inventory for 1,500 because this is an intercompany purchase of Quickie Chow. Then credit cash for 1,500. So this inventory will now be carried in the books of Quickie Chow. However, the cost per Quickie Chow's book is the intersegment selling price at 1,500. Then, aside from these transactions related to a downstream sale, Quickie Chow sold goods in 2021 that are Lucky You goods. So, these goods were sold by Lucky You to Quickie Chow, and then Quickie Chow subsequently sold these goods to outside customers. And based on the data, the cost of these goods is 1,200. So, first, let us prepare the journal entry related to the cost of sale of Quickie Chow. Of 1,200. So debit 
cost of sales for 1200 and credit inventory for 1200 again this is the inventory of quickie chow which are lucky you goods again if this is at 1200 this is the cost per quickie chow's books which means this includes the 25 percent inter-segment markup now let's record the journal entry for the sales transaction so debit cash for 2400 so why is it 2400 so based on the data any external sale of quickie chow must have a 50 percent gross profit in its separate financial statements so which means that the 1200 which is the cost per quickie chow's books is already at 50 percent because the cost ratio is 50 percent to determine the selling price, so the computation is 1,200 divided by 0.5. Then the credit is sales at 2,400. Now let's proceed to upstream sales. So in an upstream sale, the seller is Quickie Chow and Lucky You is the buyer. So first, let's record the entries in the books of Quickie Chow. So debit, cash for 500 pesos so this is the upstream sale then credit sales for 500 pesos then using perpetual inventory system let's record the cost of sales so debit cost of sales for 400 pesos so how do we compute for the 400 pesos this is 500 divided by 1.25 because the intersegment markup is 25 percent then credit inventory for 400 pesos then in the books of Lucky You, which is the buyer, this so this is considered as an intercompany purchase. So the entry of Lucky You is debit inventory for 500 pesos. Then credit cash for 500 pesos. Again, always remember that an intercompany buyer will carry the books purchase from the intercompany seller at intercompany selling price, which means it includes the intersegment markup. Then, aside from these transactions recorded in Lucky You, similar to Quickie Chow, Lucky You also sold goods in 2021 that are Quickie Chow goods. So, this is a result of an upstream sale. So, these goods were sold by Quickie Chow to Lucky You. Then, Lucky You subsequently sold it to outside customers. So, how much is this cost per Lucky You's books? So, this is 700 so to record let's first record the cost of sale so debit cost of sale at 700 and credit inventory at 700 again this inventory is a quickie chow goods which means this is purchased by lucky you from quickie chow and when this was purchased by lucky you the 700 includes a 25 percent intersegment markup then the entry to record the selling price to outside customer is debit cash for 1167 so why is it 1167 because the gross profit in lucky use books is 40 percent which means that the cost ratio is 60 percent and the cost is 700 which is 60 percent of the selling price so this is computed as 700 divided by 0.60 then credit sales for 1167 so we're now done with the recording of journal entries for the 2021 intercompany transactions now let's proceed to the eliminating entries in 2021 now let's proceed to the eliminating entries in 2021 so again we cannot prepare the eliminating entries at acquisition date since we have no information at acquisition date so we can now proceed to the subsequent two acquisition date eliminating entries. So since the available information in the prior year for 2021 is only in 2020, so we can prepare the prior year eliminating entries for 2021. So the available data is 2020. So among these eliminating entries, what we can prepare is only the intercompany transactions in 2020 and the amortization of excess in 2020. We cannot prepare the eliminating entry related to the 
changes in the subsidiary's retain earnings or other comprehensive income since the acquisition date, again because there is no information about this. So we can only prepare the eliminating entries for these two. So for the prior year eliminating entries, so to adjust the beginning balances of the retained earnings and other comprehensive income, including the non-controlling interest, let's start with the elimination of prior period intercompany transaction. So let's start with the downstream sale. So the downstream sale is, the entry for the downstream sale is debit retained earnings for 40 pesos and credit cost of sales for 40 pesos. Again, if you still remember that the 40 pesos is the 25% intercompany profit on the ending inventory of Quiki Chow. So that ending inventory of Quiki Chow is acquired from Lucky You. And it is still unsold to outside parties as of December 31, 2020. That is why it is considered as unrealized intercompany gross profit in 2020. And since we are using the FIFO method, we assume that Quiki Chow in 2021 sold these inventories to outside customers. So which means that in 2021, these 40 pesos will become realized intercompany gross profit because these inventories were sold by Quiki Chow to outside customers. So in order to reflect the realization of the 40 peso intercompany gross profit in the consolidated financial statement, the gross profit of the consolidated FS should increase by 40 pesos. How do we increase the gross profit by 40 pesos? That is by decreasing cost of sales for 2021. So by decreasing cost of sales, it will increase gross profit, thereby realizing the 40 peso intercompany gross profit. So our debit is retained earnings for 40 pesos. So why do we debit retained earnings? So we debit the retained earnings of the parent at 40 pesos because in 2020, which is the prior year, the 40 pesos is considered realized in the separate financial statement of the parent, which means in its separate statement of financial position, the 40 pesos is already closed to retain earnings in its separate financial statements. But for consolidation purposes, since the inventory that has a 40% inter-segment markup is only sold to outside customers in 2021, which is the current year, the 40 pesos is realized in 2021 for consolidation purposes, which means that it is only in 2021 that the 40 pesos should be close to the consolidated retain earnings. So that is why we remove the 40 pesos markup in the retain earnings of the parent and we will transfer it to the consolidated retain earnings for 2021. So this is our entry. So debit retain earnings at 40. So let's proceed to upstream sale. So for upstream sale, our journal entry would be debit retained earnings at 42 pesos, then debit non-controlling interest for 28 pesos, and credit cost of sales for 70 pesos. Again, we credit cost of sales in order to increase the gross profit that will appear in the consolidated financial statement. Because in 2021, the inventory that has an intercompany markup of 70 pesos is sold to outside customers. That is why it is realized in 2021, and it should be part of the gross profit for 2021. And our debit, unlike in downstream sale, we have two accounts debited, retained earnings at 42 pesos and non-controlling interest at 28 pesos. So since this is an upstream sale and this is the sale of the acquiry, so the non-controlling interest has a share on every transaction of the acquiry, including the upstream sale. That is why the NCI has a share on the 70 peso intercompany markup.
Now let's proceed to the another prior year eliminating entry and that is the amortization of 2020 excess which is the impairment of goodwill. So our impairment in the goodwill in 2020 is 10 pesos. So the entry will be a credit to goodwill 10 pesos and since the impairment of goodwill has an effect on the net income of the subsidiary Again, the NCI and the controlling interest will both have a share on the impairment losses. So for the share of non-controlling interest, it is debited for 4 pesos, which is 40% of 10 pesos. And the share of controlling interest is debited to retain earnings at 6 pesos. Now let's proceed to the eliminating entries for the current year 2021. So for the current year eliminating entries, we will have the intercompany transactions, amortization of excess, again we only have goodwill impairment, and the share of the non-controlling interest in subsidiaries net income. So first, let's record the eliminating entry for the intercompany transaction. So starting with the dividends paid by the acquiree for the amount of 30 pesos, so that is credit to dividends paid at 30 pesos. Then debit dividend income for 18 pesos, which is 60% of 30 pesos, and another debit for non-controlling interest, 12 pesos. Then next is the intercompany sale of inventory in 2021. Let's start with downstream sale. The downstream sale for 2021 is 1,500, and to eliminate this is to debit sales for 1,500 and credit 1,500 for cost of sales and again another eliminating entry for 2021 related to this downstream sale for the current year is the elimination of the intercompany markup of 25 percent for the ending inventory that is not yet sold to outside customers again for the downstream sale the ending inventory is carried in the books of the acquiree which is quickie chow and any inventory that is unsold by Quickie Chow to outside customers is not considered realized. And for consolidation purposes, the intercompany markup on those inventory should not appear. So first, let us compute how much is the ending inventory in Quickie Chow's books that were acquired from Lucky You. So we have a beginning balance of 200. So this is the ending balance in the downstream sale in Quickie Chow's books in 2020. Then there is a current year downstream sale of 1,500. And there is a sale of 1,200. So the 1,200 is the cost of goods in the separate books of Quickie Chow. That is related to the inventories acquired from Lucky You. So this is the 1,200. Again, all these amounts includes a 25% intersegment markup. So which means the 200, 1, 5, 1, 2, and 500 includes a 25% markup on cost. Because this is the cost in the separate books of Quiki Chow. This is not the cost that will appear in the consolidated financial statement because we need to remove the 25% markup. And since the remaining inventory unsold at the end of 2021 is 500 pesos, the 25% out of 500 pesos should be eliminated because this is still unrealized, which means that the gross profit should not include the 25% markup. And in order for us to remove the 25% from the consolidated gross profit, we debit cost of sales. And our credit is ending inventory at 100 pesos. Again, we, de we credit inventory for 100 pesos because the inventory in the books of acquiry is 500. And it includes the 100 pesos, 25% intercompany markup. And in the consolidated financial statement, the ending inventory is presented at 400 pesos, which is 500 less 100 pesos. So that is the cost of that inventory when it was acquired by Lucky You from outside supplier. 
Then our debit is cost of sales for 100 pesos in order to reduce the consolidated gross profit. Now let's proceed to upstream sale. So the upstream sale is 500 pesos. So, so to eliminate the intercompany sale, debit sales at 500 and credit cost of sales of 500. Again, we credit cost of sales because we need to reduce the purchases account. And again, in the computation of cost of sales, purchases is included. If the purchases increase, cost of sale will also increase. If the purchases decreases, the cost of sale will also decrease. That is why in order to decrease the purchases, we need to decrease the cost of sales. Again, cost of sales is used because we are using perpetual inventory system. But if you are using periodic inventory system, your credit would be purchases. Now, let us eliminate the unrealized intercompany markup on the ending inventory related to the upstream sale. However, we still need to compute for the ending inventory in Lucky U's books. Again, for upstream sale, the buyer is Lucky U, which means the inventory that is sold under upstream sale is carried in the books of Lucky U. So let's start with the ending inventory in 2020, which is beginning for 2021. That is 350 pesos. Then we have a current year purchases by Lucky You from Quickie Chow, which is 500. That is the intersegment sale. This is the intersegment sale of Quickie Chow, which means this is an intercompany purchase by Lucky You. Then out of this 850 available for sale, Lucky You sold 700. So this is the data, which is the cost of goods sold of Lucky You related to Quickie Chow goods. So the ending inventory, which is unsold as of December 31, 2021, is 150 pesos. Again, this amount includes 25% intersegment markup. So this is the amount or this is the cost that will appear in the separate books of Lucky You. Because as far as Lucky is concerned, Quickie Chow is an external party. That is why this is the cost in the point of view of the separate FS of Lucky You. But for the point of view of the consolidated financial statements, again, the cost that should appear is the cost that is acquired from outside supplier. Again, when we say outside supplier, supplier that is outside of the group. So in order to determine the outside supplier cost, we need to eliminate the 25%. So our eliminating entry is debit cost of sales for 30 pesos. And how do we get the 30 pesos? That is 150 divided by 1.25 times 0.25. Again, we debit cost of sales because the 30 peso gross profit should not appear in the consolidated gross profit. And in order to reduce the gross profit, we increase cost of sales by 30 pesos and credit inventory for 30 pesos because the 150 will not appear as ending inventory in the consolidated financial statements. It should appear net of 30 pesos and that is 120 pesos. Now let's proceed to the next eliminating entry for the current year which is the amortization of excess over book value. So for 2021, we have an impairment of goodwill for 20 pesos. So the entry is debit impairment loss. However, the account that we will use is expenses for 20 pesos. Then credit goodwill at 20 pesos. Then the last eliminating entry is the share of the NCI in subsidiaries net income for the current year. However, before we can prepare this eliminating entry, we need to compute for the subsidiary's net income adjusted for consolidation purposes. Now let's compute the net income in the separate books of Lucky and Quickie. So for Lucky and Quickie, the sales is 9,200 and 5,600 pesos. So that is the total sales, which includes external and intersegment sales. Then deduct cost of sales. The cost of sales is 5,820 for Lucky and 2,950 for Quickie. 
So how did we get the cost of sales of 5820 and 2950? So the cost of goods sold is computed as, so for lucky you, so the 9,200 is divided into external and internal sales. So the internal sales is 1,500, so this is the downstream sale, and the external sale is 7,700, which is 92 less 15. So how did we get the cost of goods sold? So for 1,500, the 1,200 is computed as 1,500 divided by 1.25 because the markup is 25% on cost. However, for external sales, the gross profit is 40%, which means that cost ratio is 60%. So 77 times 0.6. So the total is 5,820. So that this is the cost of sale for Lucky. And for Quickie Chow, the total sales is 5,600, 500 of which is intersegment, which means the remainder is the external sale that has a gross profit of 50%, which means the cost ratio is 50%. So to get the hogs, 51 times 0.5. And for the intersegment sale, 500 divided by 1.25. So that is how we compute for the 2,950. Now let's compute for the gross profit. So the gross profit in the separate books of Lucky and Quickie is 3,380 and 2,650. Then let's add the dividend income of Lucky, which is 18 pesos. So the total revenue for Lucky is 3,398 and 2,650 for Quickie. Then let's deduct the expenses of 1,250 and 700 for Quickie. Then the net income of Lucky and Quickie in its separate books is 2,148 and 1,950. Now let's compute for the adjusted net income of both entities. So for the net income per books, as we computed earlier, Lucky has 2,148 and Quickie has 1,950. And when combined, the total is 4,098 pesos. Again, this is not yet the consolidated net income, but because this is still to be subjected to adjustments. And the adjustments are based on the eliminating entries that we prepared a while ago. So the first eliminating entry is the intercompany transactions. So let us first include the dividend income. So the dividend income eliminated will have an effect on the Lucky's net income. So that is a deduction of 18 pesos. Then another is the unrealized profit on the intercompany sale of inventory. Again, the, in, the unrealized profit pertains to the 25% intersegment markup on the ending inventory of both Lucky and Quickie. So for the downstream sale, the unrealized 25% markup is 100 pesos. And for Quickie, the unrealized 25% markup on upstream sale is 30 pesos. So the total unrealized is 130 pesos. And next is the realized profit on intercompany sale of inventory. So this pertains to the beginning inventory for 2021. So remember that in 2020, our ending inventory includes an intersegment 25% markup. And those were unrealized as of 2020. And using FIFO method, the beginning inventory is considered sold in 2021, which means that the 25% markup on our beginning inventory from intercompany sale is considered realized in 2021. That is why it is added to the net income of both entities. And why it is added? Because for Lucky, the realized profit of 40 pesos is not part of the 2,148 net income recorded in its books. Because the 40 pesos, again, in the separate books of Lucky is recorded as realized gross profit in 2020. But for consolidation purposes, the 40 pesos is realized in 2021. That is why we need to add this to the 2,148 so that it will be reflected as a realized gross profit in 2021 for consolidation purposes. And for Quickie, the realized 
intercompany 25% markup is 70 pesos. Again, it is added to 1,950 because it is not part of the 1,950. Because in the separate books of Quickie, the 70 pesos is considered realized in 2020. And this is part of the net income of Quickie in 2020. But for consolidation purposes, the 70 pesos is realized in 2021. That is why this must be part of the gross profit for consolidation purposes. And we need to add this to 1,950 so it will be included in the consolidated gross profit. So the total is 110 pesos. So next is the amortization of excess. So we only have impairment of goodwill of 20 pesos and that is on the and that is deducted from the net income of Quickie. Always remember that impairment loss is deducted from the net income of the acquiree, not on the net income of the acquirer. So let us now compute for the net income that will appear in the consolidated financial statements. For Lucky, the adjusted is 2,070. For Quickie, 1,970. So the total is 4,040 pesos. And this is the consolidated net income. Again, consolidated net income is the summation of the two net income adjusted. It is not yet divided into NCI and controlling interest. So now let's get the share of the non-controlling interest at 40%. Again, the NCI has a share only on the net income of Quickie, not on Lucky. So the 40% of 1,970 is 788. So which means that the share of the controlling interest includes its own net income of 2,070 pesos and its share from the net income of subsidiary, which is 1,182. So the total share of the controlling interest in the consolidated net income is 3,252. Again, there is a difference between the share of the controlling interest in the subsidiary's net income and its share in the consolidated net income. The share of controlling interest in the net income of the subsidiary is 1,182. However, the share of the controlling interest in the consolidated net income is 3,252. So now we can prepare the last eliminating entry, which is the share of NCI in subsidiary's net income. So the share is 788 pesos. So that is debit to share of NCI in subsidiary's net income for 788 and a credit to non-controlling interest for 788 pesos. Now, since we only have an information about the income statement, let's prepare the consolidated income statement. So this is the computation that we did a while ago. So let's add another row for the share of NCI in subsidiary's net income and share of the controlling interest in the consolidated net income. And let's add again for the ending inventory. So for the ending inventory of Lucky, it is 400, then 250 for Quickie. So this is an ending inventory includes also other inventories that were acquired from outside suppliers, not only the inventories acquired by each entity from one another. So let's now include the eliminating entries, so debit and credit. Let's start with sales. The sales has a debit of 2,000, so that is the total debit. Then for cost of sales, the debit is 130 pesos, then the credit is 2,110. Then for dividend income, we have 18 pesos under debit and for expenses, which is the impairment loss for 20 pesos. Then let's get the consolidated balances. So for the consolidated balances, we have 12,800 for the total sales. So the consolidated sales is 12,800. Then the consolidated cost of sales is 6,790. So which will give us a consolidated gross profit of 6,010 pesos. Then we have no dividend income in the consolidated income statement. So the total revenue is 6,010 pesos. Then the expenses is 1,970 pesos 
That's why the consolidated net income is 4,040 pesos. Then let's deduct the share of the NCI of 788 pesos. And this will give us 3,252, which is the share of the controlling interest in consolidated net income. And for the inventory, so these are the cost in the point of view of Lucky and Quicky. Again, the end inventory that will appear is the cost in the point of view of the single economic entity, which means that the inventory that must appear in the consolidated statement of financial position is the cost of inventory acquired by the group from outside supplier. And our adjustment is 130 pesos. So this is the unrealized intercompany 25% markup. So... The ending inventory that will appear in the consolidated statement of financial position is 520. So which means this is the consolidated ending inventory. So again, where did we get the eliminating entries? So for the 2,000 pesos, so this is the 1, 5, and 500. Then for the cost of sales, the 130 is... The 130 pesos, then the 2010 is 515, and the adjustments that we made related to the prior period intercompany transaction of 40 and 70. Then for the dividend income, this is the 18 pesos. Then for the impairment loss, so this is the expenses that we recorded. Now let's answer the Last requirement for 2021, letter C, the consolidated retained earnings and non-controlling interest for 2021, December 31. So let's start with January 1, 2021 balance. So this is the December 31, 2020 ending balance. So for consolidated retained earnings, we have a beginning balance of 9,387. So to check whether this is correct, you can check whether this is the ending balance that we had in 2020. So for non-controlling interest, our beginning for 2021 is 3,130 pesos. So first transaction affecting consolidated written earnings and NCI is the consolidated net income. So the amount that will be close to the consolidated retained earnings is the share of the controlling interest, which is 3,252 and for the NCI is 788 pesos. So which means that the total consolidated net income close to RE and NCI is 4,040 pesos. Next is the dividends paid. So the dividends paid that will be deducted from RE is the dividends paid by the controlling interest which is the parent for the amount of 90 pesos. Then for the NCI, NCI will also be reduced for the dividends paid by the subsidiary only up to 40%, which is 12 pesos. Now let's get the ending balances for 2021, December 31. So the consolidated reading earnings is 12,549 and the NCI is 3,906 pesos. Now let's check whether the consolidated cost of sales of 6790 is correct. So this is only a so this is only a checking procedure. So again the sales is composed of two external and intersegment sales. So for the external sales we have two because the inventories of the entities are acquired both from outside supplier and internal supplier. So we have from external supplier and internal supplier. Then we have an intersegment sale. So let us compute the sales recorded per books for Lucky and Quickie. So first is the intersegment sale, 15 for Lucky and 500 for Quickie. Then the external sale that is acquired from internal supplier is 1,167 pesos. So this is the sale of Lucky to outside customers. And this inventory was acquired by Lucky from Quickie. And 2,400 for Quickie. So this is the sale of Quickie to outside customers. 
and this inventory is acquired by Quiki from Lucky. Then, then the external sale of Lucky is 6,533, which includes goods that were acquired from outside supplier. And for Quiki is 2,700. So the total sales recorded by Lucky and Quiki is 9,200 and 5,600. Now let's reconcile the cost of goods sold recorded in each of their books for Lucky and Quiki. So for the 6,533, the cost of goods for Lucky is 3,920 and for Quiki is 1,350. So the 3,920 is computed as 6,533 times 0.6 because the cost ratio for external sales of Lucky is 60%, while the cost ratio for Quickie for external sale is 50%. So that is why 2.7 times 50%. Then same procedure for the 1,167 and 2,400. So this is based on the cost ratio for external sale. However, for the intersegment sale, the cost of goods sold re recorded in each of their books is 1,200 and 400. Here, the markup is 25% on cost. That is why the computation is a bit different. So for the 1,200, this is computed by dividing 1,500 by 1.25. Then the 400 is 500 divided by 1.25. So the cost of goods sold recorded in the Lucky's book is 5,820. And for Quickie, 2,950. So that is similar in the amount recorded in its separate books. Now, what is the breakdown of the 6,790? So for Lucky and Quickie. So for the external sale, that includes goods that were acquired from external supplier, these are still recorded at 3,920 and 1,350 because these costs are the cost when it was acquired from external supplier, supplier outside the group. However, for the 700 and 1,200, it will not appear in the same amount because the 700 and 1,200 includes a 25% intersegment markup. And for the consolidation purposes, it should exclude the 25% markup. That is why for the 700, the amount that will appear in the consolidated cost of goods sold is 560 and for the 1,200 is 960. So this is computed as 700 divided by 1.25, so that is 560, and the 960 is computed as 1,200 divided by 1.25. Then for the intersegment sale, since these were eliminated in our eliminating entries, the cost related to this sale will not appear in the consolidated financial statements. So the total cost of goods sold that will appear in the consolidated financial statement is 4,480 for Lucky and Quickie is 2,310. When we add these two, the total is 6,790. So that is the 6,790 consolidated cost of sales in our consolidated income statement. Again, this is only a checking procedure. So this is the accounting procedure in the preparation of consolidated financial statements when there is an intercompany sale of inventory.